Okay, so welcome to Dr. Steven. We're here with Leon Logothetis. Hey, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? Love the Kindness Diaries, man. It's, Thank you. It's just so moving and inspiring. So thanks for being here. Now, the one thing that, that when you first start watching, you, you're, 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 you're brought into this world where you're traveling around. Now, I'm sure you're, you're getting tweeted and Facebooked and Instagrammed all the time. Are, what are, you, are there any haters saying, whoa, you know, you, uh, sure, this is easy for you to do. You're, you were a broker, you had money. Uh, what do you say to the people who say, oh, this is, this is faked or something like that? Sure, sure. Um... So yeah, there are haters, but there are haters in all avenues of life. Sure. And I do my best, you know, not to engage. And if someone doesn't like what I do, they are entitled to not liking it. If someone doesn't believe in what I do, they are entitled not to believe in it. If someone doesn't believe that I actually did the journey, they are entitled to do that too, you know? And, and if someone thinks to themselves, that the journey is invalidated because I have means, they are also entitled to think that as well, you know? Yeah. I've never shied away from the fact that I had means and that it was something that enabled me to do what I do. But that doesn't take away from the people that I met on the journey. It doesn't take away from the kindness I received and it doesn't take away from the kindness that I tried to give. Um, and, and that's, that's really what it's all about, going out into the world and, and jumping out of your comfort zone um, and connecting with people. Yes. And you can connect with people if you have no money and you can connect with people if you have money. Money doesn't determine how big your heart is or how small your heart is. Yes, yes. So what, was, what happened? You're this successful broker in London. Where, what was the moment? Where were you exactly in your life that you said, this isn't working, or I want to do something different. I'm going to take this journey. I'm going to go out of my comfort zone as, uh, you know, Neil Donald Walsh, life begins mm. at the end of your comfort zone. I love that quote. Yes. I actually, when I was traveling around the world, I had that quote on my backpack. I don't know if you know that but on my magical black backpack. It might have been subconscious, yeah, I remember yeah. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have it on my, on my backpack. So look, I used to be a broker. Were you comfortable? It, were, you, were you just living your life in comfort in London and being, oh yes, yeah, so, you know, <laughs> were, were you quite successful? Look, you know, I was, I was successful on the outside. I had everything I needed on the outside. Yes. But on the inside, I was spiritually and emotionally bankrupt. And that's why I couldn't do it anymore. I was sitting behind this desk, kind of being, feeling and being totally uninspired. Mm. And I watched the movie, The Motorcycle Diaries, which is a romanticized version of Che Guevara traveling across South America, relying on kindness. And there was something in that movie that just inspired me, touched my heart in a beautiful way. And I realized that I didn't have to sit behind this desk. I didn't have to live a life where I wasn't um, going out and being of service, where I wasn't going out and showing my heart and, and, and receiving kindness and giving kindness um, and living my own life, not someone else's life. And that was the moment when I decided that that was it. There was no more uh, sitting behind that desk and uh, I took a risk and I, and, I, and I jumped off a cliff and uh, hoping that there was water. <laughs> You certainly, you certainly took a huge leap. Mm. All right, you're, you're behind the desk, you have the epiphany. Now, how did it go from, all right, I'm spiritually and, and, and psychologically bankrupt to now I'm going to create a, a trending Netflix show that shows, <laughs> and, 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 and I love the show, but I want people to understand, how does it go from, I'm, go I'm going to go on this journey and I'm going to find the crew and I'm going to go around the world and then share it with the world. How does that become the fulfillment of the inner journey? Sure, that's a great question. And it didn't just happen overnight. And the Netflix show didn't happen the moment I quit my job. <laughs> like, beep, beep. <laughs> Hello, Leon, it's yeah, Netflix. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even think Netflix was around then. So basically what happened was I quit my job and I, I decided to hitchhike from Times Square to the Hollywood sign. Mm. 
with no money in my pocket. Well, I decided to do it on five dollars a day. Um, and it was about opening my heart to people, and it was about people opening their heart to me. It was interesting because in my everyday life, I had money, everything on the outside, but nothing on the inside. Yeah. This time, I would have nothing on the outside, and I would have to um, kind of embrace everything on the inside, my heart and other people's hearts. Yes. So that's kind of the first step. And then I ended up in Los Angeles. Yes. Um, I was living in Los Angeles for a couple of years. Yeah. I ended up back behind a desk. I started a television production company. And I was doing that for five or six years. And I sat behind this desk again, and I thought to myself, what am I doing? I'm sitting behind a desk again. <laughs> and in that moment, I was walking uh, down Hollywood Boulevard, yeah. and I saw a chap, a homeless man, with a sign that said, kindness is the best medicine. And I had a, yeah, I was like, whoa. And I had another epiphany. I thought to myself, whoa. This is another opportunity to, to radically change something. Because kindness is not just a one-way street where it's about receiving. Kindness is a two-way street, receiving and giving. Of course. So, so what I did in that moment was come up with the idea for the yellow motorbike, which was to go from LA all the way around the world back to LA, but this on kindness, yes. but this time giving back to unsuspecting Good Samaritans. And that's kind of how, and then I also quit my job once and for all, and I don't sit behind a desk pretty much ever. <laughs> um, and that's kind of how it happened. I love, I love the giving back acts aspect because that uh, it's not, you didn't really know, I don't really know this when I'm starting to watch. Mm. It's a twist. Mm. And it's, it's really wonderful. But it's, okay, so uh, but you're in London. How did you end up in New York in the first place? You just said, I'm going to go to New York. Well, Times Square yeah. is like the... Center of the universe. Ex exactly. Yes. In so many ways. It's like yes. the center of consumerism. Yes. Yeah? And Hollywood, even though obviously it's a part of consumerism as well, the Hollywood sign is where dreams come true. So I wanted to go from the place, um, the center of consumerism, find my way to the Hollywood sign where dreams come true and see what happened in the middle. And are you writing during this? Are you filming yourself? Are you, how does the $5 a day journey from New York to LA um, lead to you uh, starting a television company? Sure. Because you're a broker, now you're a television executive. Sure. Now you're a Netflix star. <laughs> I mean, how does it, ha so, did so, you always want to be in, in, in front of the camera? Not really. I mean, look, I always, I used to be a goalkeeper in, in soccer and I would, I was, I, would, I was well known in my school yeah. for like making these crazy saves and you know, being a bit of Ooh. a, what's the word? Showboat? Uh, yes. No, not showboat. <laughs> the other word is showboat's bad. <laughs> well. <laughs> a, sh a, sh a, sh a showman. A showman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, a showboat is you're showing off your skills to an excess. Exactly, yes, look, exactly. I didn't mean to be offensive. No, it's no. okay, not at all. No. Um, and, you know, I'd always wanted, I'd always had this like eccentric part of my, my personality. Yes. So yes. I had a friend. I can relate. I'm yeah. not the normal oncologist. I, I've heard, I've heard. <laughs> I've heard you sing. So, so um, I had a friend who was in the TV business, mm -hmm. um, and I called him up and I said to him, hey, you know, I have this idea for a show. Why don't me and you and someone else go and cross America and uh, do the show? And he looked at me like, how on earth are you going to cross America on five dollars a day? I said to him, don't worry, man. It's on the kindness of strangers. And he's like, it's not possible. You can't do it. I said, don't worry, man. We'll do it. And that's really how it happened. I mean, now, and you as did I, it. Yeah. Well, where's that? Where can I watch that? I mean, is well, that... Well, that show's called Amazing Adventures of a Nobody. Um, there's a book out called Amazing Adventures of a Nobody as well, yeah. um, but the show doesn't air anymore. Okay, yeah. got that. And then it was, wow, that was somewhat of a success. And then that was, I'm going to take it to the next exactly, level. Exactly, exactly. And then I ended up sitting and behind And you made a desk. this on your own. Yeah. It wasn't Netflix said, go around the world on a yellow motor, in a little Chang Yang. Yeah, right? Chang Yang, <laughs> Chang Jang. Chang Jang. It was, you made the show and then Netflix was interested. I mean, how does, how does that happen? Does, did, did you call Netflix 1-800-NETFLIX and say, I have a show? It's actually 1-800-NETFLIX-4. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I sold it to a distribution company and the distribution company uh, sold it to Netflix. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. So now you're, 
now you're a, um, a television star. What's, what's changed in your life? I mean, what's, what's happening? Do you know, the biggest thing that's changed in my life is that I get to touch people's lives in a, in a profound way. And I've received so many beautiful messages from people telling me that they watch the show with their kids, that they've been inspired by the show. Um, I've watched the show with my kids, by the yeah, way. Yeah. We, were, we were just at a snow vacation and we were watching it all together. And I'll tell you, it is... <laughs> Everyone can get something out of this. Yeah. It's not just for me. My, my, my five-year-old was, I'm sorry, my seven-year-old was like, I love Leon. I mean, he really could, he really could relate to, to the kindness and mm. that you had no place to stay and, mm. and that people with nothing were the ones who gave you the most, mm. which... I saw over and over and over throughout the season. Those who had the least amount seemed to be the ones over and over that were the most generous of their soul. From Pittsburgh to, to um, uh, Sarajevo. Mm. Sarajevo? Yeah, that was a powerful episode. But did you find that? It was the... It, why do you think it's those that were not of tremendous means were the most generous of spirit. I would say that in the Western world we've lost in many ways our sense of community and in the poorer parts of the world they have not lost their sense of community um, and the sense of community brings with it a sense of kindness and a sense of compassion for each other. That doesn't mean that we don't have that compassion, we don't have that kindness, we do but on a daily basis we're walled off from people. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, mm. and it takes something to shock us out of that. Like 9-11, for example. You know, the stories of the compassion and kindness and empathy that New Yorkers showed each other was incredible. Yeah. Yet, you go to New York now and, you know, it's, it's not renowned for its kindness. But right. during 9-11, it was. Yeah. That means that we have it. Yeah. You know what, I do see Kindness Diaries as a, a CPR for the soul, as I call it. Mm. CPR being compassion, presence, and resilience. Mm. Compassion, presence, and resilience. You had to rely on the compassion of others. You had to be very present with people to express to them what you were doing, what you were going... Now, how did people react to you when they saw the crew with you? Were they like, ooh, what can I get out of this guy? He's famous, he's got a camera crew. Or was it, it, was it more organic than that? Was, was there some suspicion of the camera crew? Or was there, ooh, he's on to something. He's, he's, a, he's got a camera crew. There's a reality show happening here. I can be in it. Is it was there any of that? Look, I, I think that in, in many instances the camera helped, but in certain instances it didn't. You know, there were many people out there, believe it or not, that don't want to be on film. <laughs> they were turned you know? off yeah, by it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're um, right. Uh, and I would go up to people as often as I could without the crew there. And I would tell them what I was doing. And that was one of the reasons why I got the yellow bike. Because I knew the yellow bike would be a conversation starter. Yep. Irrelevant of whether there was a camera crew there. When I'm driving around LA in that yellow bike, people stop me all the time. They want to talk to me. And in that moment of hello, if... If I were then to tell them, hey, I'm traveling around the world relying on kindness, and, I, and we'd have this conversation, someone would ultimately say, hey, I'm willing to help you. Irrelevant of the camera crew. Irrelevant of the camera crew. So you would try to go up to them without, and then if they did say, well, I'll help you, then you bring them in Absolutely. and you say, okay, we're going to film We'd have to do it again. Yes. You know, it's like... You, you have go, to do it again. Exactly. So you, sometimes the initial, the initial discussion on film may look a bit awkward because it's the second discussion. The first discussion has already happened. That's, because That's if, more authentic yeah, that you went if, out without the camera crew. Yeah, because if you go up to someone with a camera crew and you just start talking to someone randomly and they don't know you, they're going to be like, what are you doing? Like, right. Please turn the camera off. Yeah, I didn't sign yeah. a release. It, well, things like that. <laughs> it's invasive. You're yes. invading someone's privacy. Correct, correct. So now that the, the Kindness Diaries is trending on Netflix, it's, it's out there, it's doing well, um, what is the, the bigger goal? Netflix is an entertainment company. Is this a form of entertainment? What is your biggest desire for 
the message, what people will be left with out yeah. of this having some success. Look, ultimately the show is an entertaining show. That's, that's why we did it, to entertain people. Yeah. But the most important piece of this puzzle is that the message is more powerful than the entertaining part of the show. In the sense that the message is about going, being kind to each other, being compassionate to each other, having empathy with each other. But if I didn't create a story around that, if I didn't create an entertaining vehicle, no one would care. So you create a story, you inspire people with a story, and then through the back door, you show them the, the reality of the kindness, the compassion, and that's the real message. Yes, I love that. That's, that is, that's smart because no one will watch it otherwise. Yeah. If you, Where are the eyeballs? On, on, you know, teenage make, putting makeup shows on YouTube. But this, I think, it, it goes to a wider audience because it is an interesting, very gut-wrenching concept that you are relying totally on the kindness of strangers. Now, how can I embody these principles? What can I do? What can you sure. tell the viewers today how they can bring more kindness into their everyday life. They all can't go around in, in the Chang Chang and, and go up to strangers, but what can they do right now, right today, to embody these principles? Sure, that's a great question, and you're right. It's, you can't all, we can't all go around the world in a yellow motorbike, and that's not the purpose of the show. The purpose of the show is not to tell you to go out and do something epic. Um, the purpose is to inspire you on a daily life to be kind. And that may sound like a cliche, but if we come from our hearts and we commit to living a life where we give back to others, not necessarily on a big scale, but on a small scale, whereby you smile at someone, whereby you see someone, you are present with someone. That can be done on a daily basis. That can be done on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, every day, every moment. Again, there's no perfection, so there are times when you may not be able to, and times when you fall off the wagon, per se, and that's okay. But if you come from your heart, and you come into life with a commitment to truly going out there and, and loving, it, it's a beautiful and a profound way to live. It is. I, I, and I mean, I, yes, this is why it resonates so much with me as, as I'm trying to bring this to medicine and the doctor-patient relationship. This is why I'm, I'm so resonating with what you're saying. It's even could be as simple as powering down your phone for five minutes, couldn't it? It could be playing with your kid without the iPad. It could be as simple as that, couldn't it? That's it. That's what it's all about. It's about being kind, not just to others, but to yourself. And one way to do that is to turn the phone off. And we were talking earlier about how I have this, um, <laughs> how I have this, um, oh my God, what Very is it? old school. Yeah, this old school phone. With tape on you it. And I have, this old, doesn't, I have this old school phone because I, like everyone else, am addicted. Hello, Leon, are you there? <laughs> All right, go ahead. <laughs> I, 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 like everyone else, am addicted to, to, to technology. Guilty as charged. And the only way I can not be addicted is if I have a phone like this. I'm getting one. You should. It'll keep breaking, but... <laughs> I love that it's taped together. Um, what about health? I mean, what about, um, uh, did you get sick on the journey? But even more than that, um, it, kindness is good for us. Self-compassion, right? I mean, isn't that uh, being mindful of what you eat, being mindful, meditating for your, de-stressing? De isn't kindness good for you? This is a health show. I'm Dr. Steven, right? But isn't it good for you? To be, did you find that your energy and vitality and robustness for life increased as you were getting the kindness. Without a shadow of a doubt. Let me ask you a question. When you watch the news, after you've turned the news off, do you feel, do you feel healthy? Do you feel happy? Do you feel depleted and exactly. disgusted? Exactly. So imagine- Five alarm fire today. Yeah. <sighs> so imagine the opposite of that. Going out into the world, receiving love and giving love. You feel inspired. Yes, but weren't you stressed at the same time though? Like, oh, of course. Like, uh, 
holy crap, how are we going to capture this? And what if, uh, what if no one buys the show? How many times did you think that per day? What if, what if I'm wasting my time here? Look, I was under a tremendous amount of stress. You can't cross the earth without any money and not be stressed. Um, but ultimately, I learned so much. The people that I met m made me into the man I am today. The kindness I received, the bad things that happened as well. It just, it's like... I, what I, bad things? Uh, well, sleeping on the streets is not good. No, I know. Um, I mean, I did, I mean, there's challenging things, but yeah. did anything really bad happen to no, you? No, I mean, nothing really bad happened to me. Um, because I, I think we all have a sixth sense and travel enables that sixth sense to kind of grow and expand. And I knew what situation to put myself into and what situation not to put myself into. But you talked about presence earlier. Yes. When you're with someone. CPR. Yeah, CPR. When you're with someone and you're doing something like this, you have to be present fully because they are helping you. Like with Tony on the streets of Pittsburgh. Yep. I couldn't just turn off for Tony. The guy was helping me out. I needed to be there with him, not just physically, but uh, up here as well, in my heart, and that's all about presence. Yes, you had to, uh, and then you and the crew gave him training to become a chef. Yeah. And a place to actually live. Yeah. Of his own. Yeah. Do you keep in touch with these folks? I do, quite a few of them. I keep in touch with Tony. I keep in touch with uh, Willie, who's the Scotsman from episode one. Uh, the rickshaw driver in episode 7. Um, so yeah, and the guy in episode 13 at the end. Are these lifelong friends? Oh, I'm sorry, what yeah, about yeah. the episode Yeah, 13? yeah, I, I stay in touch with him as well. I don't stay in touch with all of them, yeah. but I do stay in touch with quite a few of them. Lifelong friends? Yeah, some of them, absolutely. Deeru, without a shadow of a doubt, the rickshaw driver. He's a beautiful man. As we're, as we're winding down here, let me just say the message is vital for medicine, for health, for life, for humanity. That's why it resonates so much with you. you. You took a stand. You took a stand. And there are going to be those who say what they say, and you, you, can, you just have to let that go. But what's next? What, where, where are you heading next? I mean, uh, talk to me. Yeah, I, I mean, look, you know, as a kid I was, I was bullied. And I know that there are many kids out that are bullied out there that are bullied and I know that there were many adults. I was bullied. Can you imagine with the with the Jew fro and the buck teeth and the... <laughs> so I can imagine it wasn't very pleasant. No. Um, and you know I've made it a mission in some ways to inspire kids. I want kids because I know how they feel um, and I can relate to them not from the perspective of an adult but from the perspective of a ten-year-old kid mm -hmm. um, and I want to inspire them to go out there and believe in themselves and know that there's someone out there, even if they don't have anyone in their lives, there is someone out there, me, who believes in them. And that's such a beautiful mm. thing. I remember as a kid, I didn't have anyone I felt believed in me. So I try my best to give it to them, to, to look at them in the eyes and say, look, I believe in you. And it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Is there going to be a season two? Well, I'm actually working on uh, doing a round the world trip in an electric car based on kindness, based on all the tenets of the kindness diaries. Except I think it's very important, it's not just about human interaction and being kind and being compassionate to each other. It's important to be kind and compassionate to our planet. I mean, you know, without our planet, what do we have? So I added a little bit of a twist with, with, uh, with the uh, yellow electric car called Kindness 2. <laughs> I love it, I we love it. We shall see if it, if it happens. When, when would you start filming it? It would be at the end of the summer. I love it. I love it. And so we need our health, and we need the health of our earth. Absolutely. And we need the health of our hearts. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, thanks for being here, man. I, uh, I consider you a soul brother now, man. I mean, this is, you've done it. You took the stand that I am, I am standing for in, in medicine that we can break down the walls between doctor and patient and the almighty knowing first and then and come together as a community a powerful partnership in healing and it's the same thing you're doing out there and, and, and you're going to feel good when you're kind 
You most certainly are. You get back more than you than you you get back much more than you give, don't you? And you receive more when you give that you can't even define. It's very true. It's it's unexplainable. It's a beautiful feeling. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming to Dr. Steven. We'll see you next time. Peace out. Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thumbs up. I love you. We'll see you on the next show. Woo!